Thank you so much, Steph. The Trudeau government continues to defend the COVID-19 vaccine rollout. During last night's emergency debate in the House of Commons, they doubled down, saying that delays from Pfizer will not push back the goal of vaccinating all Canadians who want one by September. And we are offering very clear, precise details to Canadians. 1.1 million vaccines have already arrived in our country. Six million doses will arrive by the end of the first quarter. Now, a reminder here, there will be no deliveries from Pfizer this week to Canada, and only a quarter of the previously promised delivery is expected next week. Opposition parties say the Trudeau government lacks a clear plan. Will this minister release to Canadians portions of the contracts that at least tell Canadians how many doses we're going to receive, by when and from who. Indeed, Mr. Speaker, no other country, to my knowledge, puts out week-to-week -week delivery schedules. And the reason we put those delivery schedules out, Mr. Speaker, is because we believe that the provinces and territories and Canadians at large need to be able to plan in terms of when vaccinations are going to be occurring in their province. This comes as the EU has been told it may receive fewer doses from AstraZeneca and concerns over a possible vaccine export ban. Okay, how about a little bit of positive news? The country's first made in Canada vaccine, it has started clinical trials here in the city. And while this is a major milestone, the payoff could still be a long way down the road. It doesn't alleviate any short term uh, shortages of vaccine doses from the approved suppliers. While we're progressing through that, we need to build up our manufacturing capacity so that we have a stockpile of ready-made vaccines that we can roll out once we're approved. Experts say it is essential that Canada become self-reliant when it comes to vaccines, not just now, but for the future. And coming up here in just a few minutes, we're going to be speaking to Dr. Payush Patel, who is Chief Medical Officer for Providence Therapeutics, joining us for more on what we can expect. Well, Premier Doug Ford is calling on Ottawa to mandate COVID testing for all foreign travellers to Canada and a temporary ban on flights from countries where new strains of this virus have surfaced. I can't figure out for the life of me why we aren't testing every single person that comes through this airport and the land uh, crossings as, as well. We have to lock down. The province started a voluntary COVID screening at airports in early January. Nearly 6,900 have been tested, turning up 146 positive cases. But if tests are to be made mandatory and flights banned, that ruling has to come from the federal government. Currently, international flyers to the country have to show a negative test 72 hours before their flight to Canada. The Prime Minister promising more travel restrictions are coming shortly, and it may include a mandatory 14-day hotel quarantine period upon arrival. And in the 7 o'clock hour, we're going to be hearing from a travel industry expert as well. At 8 a.m., we'll be checking in with City News political specialist Cynthia Mulligan. We're going to break all of this down for you. Well, a soon-to-be-released report on what led up to the Governor General's resignation includes claims of physical contact with former staffers. This is according to a CBC report. Julie Payette abruptly quit last week ahead of an independent report, which allegedly claims former Rideau Hall workers were verbally abused and belittled in public by the Governor General. But the CBC now reporting sources with knowledge of what is in that report say there were instances of physical contact where staffers felt threatened. The CBC has not seen this final document. Payette got a copy of the report last week before stepping down, her top assistant also resigning. Today, marking the United Nations International Holocaust Remembrance Day, and we're going to take you to a live look right now from the Yad Vashem Holocaust Memorial Site. This is at Earl Bales Park at Bathurst and Shepherd. The Holocaust Remembrance Day is observed around the world to commemorate the tragedy and genocide of the Holocaust during the Second World War when six million Jews were killed by the Nazi regime and its collaborators. The International Holocaust Remembrance Day was designated by the UN in 2005. And still to come here on BT, we are continuing the conversation about this important and historic day. Coming up at 7.20, we talk to a Holocaust survivor, what lessons she learned during her harrowing journey to liberation, plus her thoughts on the resurgence of anti-Semitism happening in society today. That is still to come.
And up next, we are talking rent prices in Toronto down for the 13th month in a row. Mike Apple with the dramatic year-over-year drop.